Welcome to Unapologetically Sensitive, where you can learn, relate, laugh, and maybe even live a bolder, brighter life. I'm your host, Patricia Young. This is a weekly podcast where we explore the strengths we have because of our sensitivity and some of the challenges it poses as well. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for help from a licensed mental health professional. Hey there. To the creatives, healers, sensitives, and deep thinkers, how the heck are you doing? It is about the end of summer. So how is your summer? Are you getting ready to go back to school? Are your kids getting ready to go back to school? If you're a teacher, are you going back to teach? Fall. I'm recording this and we're in early July, so <laughs> just imagining what the end of the summer will feel like. This episode today with Jen, I, I think you really enjoy it. And I want to be very clear that we mentioned the overall themes that are going on in the world, COVID, human rights, gay and lesbian rights, gender, diversity, racism, but we don't go into specifics, shootings. It's a very heavy, hard time. So I want to be very clear what you're going to get in this episode. But we talk about, I mean, we start out by me talking about I'm feeling tired and it makes sense that I'm tired and lots of people are tired right now. And what are things that we can do to manage? What are the things that we tell ourselves how being in community during hard times can help, how being a therapist has changed a lot, talking about the patriarchy, but even though we have some very oppressive things going on, they don't get to take away our joy and our sense of connecting and things can deeply change. Jen offers some books that are in the show notes if you're interested in them. We talk about honoring everything, the simplicity, the health, healing, wholeness, which means honoring depression and feeling joy, pleasure, and connection. So I think that this is a really helpful episode for what's going on. Like I said, we don't go into specifics about some of the things that are hard right now because it's a really heavy time, but I think we need to be addressing this and talking about how do we manage and what do you do when things are hard? And we give some concrete examples of ways that you can soothe and connect. I hope you find it helpful. And now on to the show. Hey, Jen, how are you? Hi, Patricia. I'm hanging in there. How are you? Well, it's funny. We talked because you called me before we recorded because you were just kind of screaming in to get to record. You said, how are you? I'm like, I'm tired, but I love my editor. My editor said, I edited out that you said you were tired. And I say I'm tired a lot and I am tired. I am seeing my doctor about it, but like I exercised this morning and I'm tired and lots of big things are going on in the world and I'm tired. And you and I talked about coming up with another way of saying tired. And like, I think a lot of us are tired and can we normalize being tired? Yes. Yeah. I think, I think I said, I don't, I'm not sure we're meant to live like this, right? Yeah. We're not. I know I've been, I've been prioritizing my sleep a lot lately, mm -hmm. which helps a little, but, and, and I do think that physical tired is a part of it. I'm a total sleep nerd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I love kind of studying what happens and when we're unconscious and I'm fascinated with that whole process with losing and then gaining consciousness like that. But there's a different kind of tired too, right? There's like this kind of soul weary, tired, especially with just everything that's going on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've been talking about with clients and you look at COVID, we're what, two and a half years in with this ongoing uncertainty that we thought would be endemic now. We're not, at least where I'm at, we're in the highest risk level that there is. We're seeing more variants. This is not to scare anybody. It's just to name the reality of what's going on. And we're not going to go into specifics, but I think it's important, you know, as you talk about, Jen, is to put things into context. We've had issues with racism, with the patriarchy, with human rights, with women's bodily autonomy, LGBTQIA rights, and now with this Roe v. Wade and with shootings. And how can we not be impacted? How can we not name that something is going on and we've been doing this for a really long amount of time and it's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of things that if you feel deeply and you think deeply human rights is kind of a big effing deal <laughs> it is a big effing deal yeah yes. 
Yep. In the midst of our really super busy lives. And I wonder how much that's also just a part of it. Like we're so, so busy and distracted. Who has a lot of time to show up? And even how do we show up when these things are happening around us? Right. And what do we do to cope? What works? I, I'll be honest with you. A lot of the times for me, I compartmentalize as things have continued to get worse and worse and worse. I, I don't watch the news. I really try and stay away with what's going on because it hurts my heart. Obviously, if I have clients that want to talk about current events, I make room for that. And it hurts my heart. It's just hard. And I have people that I'm talking to and clients that they can go to work and then they come home and they cry because they just, you know, they need to put it in a box so they can function. But the heaviness of things that are going on and whatever you need to do to honor your feelings and take care of yourself, I totally support that. And I think it's going to look different for everybody. I mean, what are you seeing and what are you doing, Jen? I just want to say I'm so glad that we're talking about it. It certainly is a, is a heavy topic, but I think being in community together around it is really important. Mm -hmm. Similar to what you're saying, you know, I sobbed that Friday night, right? And when Roe v. Wade was overturned and, you know, I'm horrified by the, the shootings. I had a client who was at, apparently there was a sh a, at least a threat of a shooting in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, friends who were there, a client who was there and it's scary. So holding space for all of these things, right? And now for years now, holding space for the pandemic. I mean, being a therapist has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. But what am I doing, right? And how, how am I coping? I don't know. It's funny. I think sometimes as you get perspective on things, but right now I feel like I'm just in it. I know my daughter is really into all sorts of activism. She's my little social justice warrior. And so I'm also being in this with my newly minted 10-year-old daughter to see through her eyes, which I don't know, we both spent that following Saturday and maybe even the Sunday pretty, pretty down. I have this, <laughs> I have this book. It's a coloring book. It's a Hex the Patriarchy, an adult coloring book for depressed witches, <laughs> which I love. And so she and I were doing some pages out of it. And so on the individual level, supporting each other, hearing each other, making space for each other, also kind of reaching a turning point where it's like they don't get to take it. They don't get to take our joy. They don't get to take our, our connecting. And so there's a little bit of rebellion. And there's a lot of rebellion in me. And I think it, you know, that's what it looks like at the individual level. And then I'm just so glad that a lot of these conversations are happening out mm -hmm. in the open, even though it seems so terrible. But the world has been unfair, unjust for a long time. And that all of these sort of public discourse, that it's all, all happening more now, I, I see well, as uncomfortable as it is, is a good sign that things could maybe really deeply change instead of just sort of surfacey change. And particularly around like the stuff with the shooters. So in this temptation to see it as an individual thing as opposed to a systemic thing. And I think if we could all just get the, if we could all get the up, the uh, download, upload, I don't know, the up leveling of mm -hmm. really being able to see, yes, you have an individual experience, but then you are a part of a system there is a larger context here. And if we just plug into that level, I think of consciousness a little bit more. And, mm -hmm. and collectively, I don't have any answers. I don't know what is next, but someone told me recently that the word quest is question, right? And questioning and just really being and continuing to stay connected to the questions mm -hmm. and that that turns into your quest. And that's how we'll discover what the bleep, 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 bleep do we do now? Right, right. One of the things that I'm seeing is, I think years ago when, you know, Supreme Court thought that they could take away people's rights in all different types of forms, 
they had power over groups of marginalized people. And what's changed and what we've seen during the pandemic is people are tired of this and people are really mobilizing and coming together. I mean, look at the people that came out to vote in this last election because people are starting to get that one vote does make a difference. And the protesting and all of the ways that people are looking at where these politicians were, these companies investing their money and do we want to support them and do we want to really kind of vote with our dollars that there are many more ways that people are having power including filing complaints with the UN because the UN is not happy about what's going on. Other countries are coming forward and saying, how can we support the US? Other countries are welcoming US citizens to move there to become citizens. I mean, it's become very apparent that this is not okay. So this is not the same as trying to strip away rights from people that have no resources and can't really come together to make change. And I think that the uprising that we've been seeing and will continue to see I'm hoping it's going to make a difference. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm really just staying curious. I know that a lot of people that I see, what I'm seeing in my practice, HSPs do tend to be really, really conscientious, Mm -hmm. really in tune to these things and deeply affected Mm -hmm. by it at a real minute to minute, day to day level. And There's a great book right now, Emily Nagoski's book, Burnout, Mm -hmm. where she talks a lot about these stressors and many of them for many, many years have been unrelenting. So the difference between the stressor and then stress in your body Mm -hmm. and how to take care of them differently, like how to separate them. Mm -hmm. I like to just stay curious what could happen. Again, starting with our premise, like human life has always been a struggle. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, these are challenging times. From a parenting perspective, I've been saying raising dragon slayers in the time of dragons. You know, I'm so happy not to have parented the power out of my kids. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they will be able to feel empowered as they become adults. Sure. In ways that maybe I didn't and don't still, um, you know, really being honest, or I always have to kind of grapple with that sense of, of coming together in community, of separating the stressor from the stress in your body, being, staying curious, like what's going to happen next? Like there are lots of good people out there, like Mm -hmm. mobilizing, like you're saying, that quest, the questioning, instead of the foreclosure, the gloom and doom, it's all over. I was told there was gonna be a hand basket (laughs) at this point, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. uh, that we're all going, we're all going down, really reach out to each other Mm -hmm. because we will have those moments of deep, deep despair Mm -hmm. and we have to create space for each other to be in those moments and hopefully in that very creating space, we don't stay in those moments. We honor them without staying in them. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And looking to leaders that can talk about what's going on in a way that feels nurturing and sacred and can give a sense of what the next steps are. I know that Glennon Doyle did a family meeting on her podcast, We Can Do Hard Things, just finding things that are going to help keep us grounded. I also know personally, I've been exercising almost every day, which is not typical for me, but there's this water fitness class that I go to twice a week. I paddle two times a week. I do skills practice. And that extra physical outlet even you know, even though I'm tired, it's a good tired. And I'd rather be good tired than agitated tired. And my body needs some relief. I'm privileged, but I'll tell you, having the puppy really helps just because there's fun and there's joy and there's spontaneity. So if there are ways that you can connect with gardening or walking barefoot where your feet are in the dirt or the sand or the water or things that we can do that are sensory, cooking, taking baths, massages, putting lotion on, There are all kinds of ways that we can really try and have just small moments of pleasure. And you don't have to be in a financial situation to be able to put some lotion on or enjoy having mint in your tea or, you know, whatever little things that there are that I think that it's important to kind of cling to those things. And the more we can stick with the routines and the things that bring us comfort and safety, watching shows that you've watched before is really relaxing for the brain. I just read an article about that. 
that it's predictable. It allows your brain to relax. And sometimes we've talked about chewing gum for the mind. So there's not any anticipatory drama or fear that you can go watch reruns of your favorite show just to bring some comfort and to allow yourself to relax. Yes, I love all of those ideas that that you just gave. And I think that there's something about returning to prioritizing some of that simplicity that may actually just like save us as a whole. Cause mm-hmm. you know, if, you, if we look at like the real, like the looming climate change and the problems that we're having, it's kind of like the, <laughs> the things we do to save ourselves might be what saves all of us. Right? And, right. and there's something about that return to simplicity. And if one of the definitions of health and healing that I really like is wholeness, right? So nothing gets excluded. So we don't exclude our despair, depression. Like we honor that. Then we also don't exclude our pleasure, joy, connection. So that, you know, health and healing is wholeness. And, and, you know, we have these lives to live, right? We still have to feed ourselves. We still have to go through our daily motions. And if we want to add to that, yeah, being rested and being supported and having had a little bit of pleasure (laughs) is going to help, right? Help us with whatever's next, whatever that is. And that's, Mm -hmm. again, my quest. I'm still trying to figure out what that is. But honoring the question, holding the question, doing the quest. Yeah. And like you said, that wholeness is embracing all of it, the stuff that's difficult and the stuff that is joyful, that that's really what it's about. And it's not about getting out of it and trying to find a way to stay out of it. It's about being present to all of it. Yeah. Yeah. I just had some really delightful moments with my son just a few minutes ago, you know, Mm -hmm. and just something like really being present for a hug He's been volunteering this week. It's his first like volunteer job. Mm. And he's just, ha- and he's working with young children and he's just having, a, he's, uh, you know, after spending the first month of the summer at his computer, with, not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know, as a mom, I'm like, how many video games is mm-hmm. this kid going to play and for how many hours to see him just light up and to be having some new experiences like that. So just those, yeah, they can be simple joys, right? Mm-hmm. They can, and and just to, that's where my rebellious, like they don't get to steal the whole of my life. Mm -hmm. I still get to connect. We're we're here looking at each other. I know that's not apparent in the podcast, but you know, I get to see your lovely face. Mm -hmm. I get to be here. I get to, and to just not, oh God, just don't, don't let, it's so precious, right? Not to let anything or anyone take that away from us for too long. Yeah. I do think that those connections, the structure, the predictability, the more sense we have of community, I think all of those things are so important and can be so grounding. And I know not everybody has them, but I'm thinking even with my son Daniel's visiting. And so he went to water fitness with me today, which is basically a bunch of retired old people. (laughs) I (laughs) love He got there and he got in the pool and he's he's like, does anybody here work? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, no, well, there are some younger people, but you know, this other woman said, yeah, most of us are retired. And then he's like, was it okay? I said that. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. But you know, it's nice having routine that on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I go to water fitness and I have friends there and people that I see there and just falling into that routine. And as I was waiting for Daniel to get up this morning, I was like that. Oh, I don't want to go. I'm tired. I've been exercising a lot, but I love the routine of it. And I feel so good afterwards. And I just think that there is something to be said for having places where we connect and we have community. And it's not that I go and I share anything deep or it's a place where I get a lot of deep emotional support. I I take for granted you and I connecting on Polo and the other friends that I have where we just stay in touch with each other and how grounding that is. So you know, if you're someone that has those little connections, even if it's at work or you ride the bus and you see the bus driver every day or you see your mail carrier or the person at the checkout stand, like those are all places where we can have just a few minute exchange of sharing joy and connection. Are there places where you can get that without it having to turn into anything that's overwhelming? But I think where we can find that connection is so important. Yes. 
And it can be brief encounters, just, just interacting with, you know, other beings in your environment. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those are people, sometimes they're just, you know, other beings too, animals in your yard, or just, just trying to feel connected that you're a part of something and you Mm -hmm. are like, you can't not be right. We're not in nature. We are nature. And I I don't know. I know, I know that for me personally, it can be scary sometimes to be in community. You know, I mm-hmm. think we get, we both get wounded in relationship and healed in relationship. Mm-hmm. And so I know that what's helped me is being able to make some space for that, have again, that one person to talk to mm-hmm. about some of those things, but you only need that in one place. And I think sometimes we don't feel like if we don't have it everywhere, we don't have it anywhere. Mm-hmm. If it's a, a therapist or a coach or just a, a dear friend, I, I just want to, I guess, voice that it can be scary to be in community for some mm-hmm. of us, especially if we've been wounded in community or sure. excluded from community. Or so I don't know. That's kind of interesting to me. Yeah. Well, I often what I see in groups, not necessarily the groups that I run, but, you know, I'm on social media a lot and I see HSPs talking about having a hard time finding where they fit and where they connect and where they belong. And there's often so much wounding that it's hard to figure out how do you find that connection with people that have done enough healing so that it ends up being a safe place and for people to have done their own healing so that they can determine whether this is a healthy space or not. And I think that that's a challenge, but I love what you said about like, all it takes is one person, one person who sees you, gets you, knows you. And if you don't have somebody, you know, look into counseling or coaching or they have peer counseling. I think especially right now, just being seen. And I always forget, you know, I'm a very verbal processor. Are you, Jen? You are too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. And I think that when we don't realize that sometimes we just need to talk things out. And if you don't have somebody to just talk things over with, I, I'm working on this sewing project and I had to say to my husband, like, can you just listen to me talk for a second? Like, I can't figure, like, this is what I'm trying to do. This is what I think needs to be done, but I don't know about this. Just talking it through gives me that clarity. And if you're a verbal processor and you don't have that, that can be really hard because we stay stuck in our heads. I mean, this is a little bit of a diversion, but it's the same thing. A friend of mine said to me this week, you're really athletic. And my thought was, no, I'm not. I have this vision in my head of, um, you know, the fat, overweight kid, and I'm not athletic. And we talked about it a little bit. And even today with Daniel coming to the water fitness class, they said like, part of me wants you to be like really proud. Look at how strong I am because the class was hard for him. But I'm like, I want you to look at me and see your mom as being like a really strong, fit person. He's like, you do your dope, you paddle, you go to class, you do all (laughs) these things. And how this ties back into what we're talking about is I think that we do have these ways that we connect, we fit in, we belong, and we have these wounded parts that still want to dominate the narrative. So in my narrative, you know, I'm, I'm a fat kid that, you know, can't be on team sports and nobody wants me. But the reality is I paddle 15 miles a week and I take these water fitness classes and I'm learning to roll my kayak and I'm upside down in the water doing really scary things. And I do it consistently. And all it takes is for my mind to take over and let me go back in that narrative where I feel fat and don't want to go exercise and paddling is stupid. You know, you've heard all of this. This is not unique to me. And we have this around connection, around fitting in, around belonging, about feeling like we're too much, whatever that wounding is, we can be showing up in our lives in very powerful ways. And those gremlin voices can still get us when we get home from work or when we don't go for that walk or we don't go to that activity. I mean, I see you nodding your head. So I want to give you a chance to share, Jen. Oh my gosh. I'm just like feeling everything that you're saying. And then I had like 50 million thoughts, but the last one there that I was having was, again, we are a part of a context, you know, and we live in a society where some parts of it directly benefit from us not feeling good about ourselves. And that is something that we kind of all grow up with, the perfectionism, the, you know, and there's so much to unpack there, right? I love that, like, 
with Lizzo's new show where it's just challenging all of this like fat phobia and what the diversity of body shapes and sizes and what bodies, which bodies can feel what way. And I mean, even the gender stuff, like we assign this gender at birth and and what comes with that is all of these personality traits and things you're supposed to do or like or not like, or, you know, how you're supposed to be and just present in the world. And I think all of those types of structures are breaking down right now. And thank God, right? I think that they are, they need to. If you look in your life, there are those intersections for all of us, you know, Mm -hmm. and if we can quest and question instead of going with just what we've sort of always assumed to be true, a new paradigm can emerge Mm -hmm. and we are that new paradigm. Like we have to embody it. Again, that we, we're not in nature. We are nature like that as we're living it like right now, you know, that and you are dope. (laughs) (laughs) you are we sort of adjust to I don't know like we lose we do lose this perspective on ourselves and we do need each other we are wired to be social I'm reading this book Lost Connections right Mm -hmm. now and it's really looking at one of the sources of a lot of our psychological distress right now is how disconnected we are from each other and decontextualized we're not in our contexts anymore and I think we're all I know we're all really suffering because of it and then we can reclaim it and we do that in these small ways right by smiling at the mailman by reaching out by not hiding behind layers of professional veneer right of being able to show up and say hey it sucks this is hard Mm -hmm. and just being real and not fronting anymore. You know, how much of our last of our histories or how, how have we, I know for me personally, you know, I was certainly trained to show up in a certain way and mm-hmm. not make anybody uncomfortable. And there were certain things that were safe and a lot of things that weren't stepping out and, and you have to kind of leave the shore to do some <laughs> yeah. exploring and adventuring and questing. And so much of that is about the patriarchy, about all these rigid rules about what's professional and how we should show up and, you know, be polite and be kind and smile and don't make waves and don't make feel people feel uncomfortable. I just saw Sarah Buino, who's been on the podcast. I saw one of her reels on Instagram where she was wearing sandals to work and saying, can this be professional? And in light of what's going on, her clients are going to get the best of, of her regardless of her footwear. And I think COVID has really, at least for me, I hardly wear makeup anymore. I'm almost always in shorts. I don't have shoes on. I I work virtually from home and it's really kind of stripped everything down. My son just started working for this company. They can't wear hats. They can't have visible tattoos. They can't have colored hair. I don't understand that. And what I want in my life is authenticity. I want real human, messy, vulnerable authenticity with mistakes and imperfection like that's where it's at that's comfortable I don't want that perfect veneer and I don't know what all this professionalism mm -hmm, stuff is (laughs) yeah I I see it through the really a white supremacy Mm -hmm. lens right like here is and 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 it it pervades everything it pervades everything Mm -hmm. (laughs) and so here's your whatever the typical is right whatever here's Mm -hmm. what or the, you know, the supremacy. Here's the representation. You don't wear hats. You don't have tattoos. You don't have colored hair. You don't have curly hair. You don't, you know, and then my initial act of rebellion was letting my hair go gray and like letting it be. It's crazy, curly, fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, even now mess was the word, right? Yeah. Cause I'm, you know, and, and so reclaiming messy as this glorious thing, as opposed to, you know, oh, you're such a mess, you know? And we are, we are trained. And even in my own family, straighten your hair, dye your hair. Oof. But here's what we're going to hold up as this ideal. And it's all a sham Mm -hmm. because nobody meets that ideal. And it's just a way, it's this whole system of oppression, Mm -hmm. right? It's just this. And so what I want in addition to, you know, echoing what you said about authenticity and messy, like, I want diversity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I want neurodiversity. I want 
<laughs> gender diversity. I want racial diversity. I want all of it. Just give me it. That's nature. That's sanity. That's yeah. what's real. This sort of, I don't know, homogenous, like everybody look this way. And if you're not, you know, we're going to call you disordered. We've got a DSM code for you. Like I just, I, you know, it's everywhere. It's yeah. it seeps through everything. Yeah. Yep. And so to question everything, <laughs> yep. you know, that, for that quest and questing to be our default setting. Like, really? Hmm. Is yeah. it that? Who says? Who says? Who is saying that? <laughs> I love that. Thank you, too, for bringing in that inclusivity of diversity and gender and racial. And yeah, that I think that that's so important. And I think that everything has been so whitewashed. And it's interesting when you were talking, I was thinking, you know, one of the reasons why I struggle with feeling like I'm athletic is I don't have what I believe. Like in my mind, an athletic body is a thin body and I'm not living in a thin body. I, I'm busty and I've got lots of extra weight on me. And who says you can't be athletic and fit and live in a larger size body, you know, and how much, which is exactly the show that you're talking about with Liz. Do you know the name of the show? I think it's Lizzo, uh, watch out for the big girls. I think it was it's on brilliant. Amazon prime. Oh, that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. You yep. know, and again, I, just challenging these stereotypes about who we are and what we can do and that it doesn't have to be this whitewashed, thin, privileged. It's just not true. Like right. it's all a myth. Like it's all, obviously it's, bad for people of color, right? But uh, it's bad for us too, like as a white person. And this is one of the thing this is one of the things that I think we need to have conversations around because a lot of people are afraid to say the wrong thing, you mm -hmm. know. A really well meaning, but it's it's in that messy. Let's let's be messy, you know. There's different perspectives. I was working with a mom the other day who's trying to help her HS daughter and this idea that there's one way to be right, mm -hmm. right? That there's one way and everything else is bad. And we're not even exactly sure what that always is. Right. Yeah. Just if there ever was a time to question every assumption that we're making. And right now there's so much support out there for it. Right. Right. Well, so much of what we live in is in the binary, good, bad, right, wrong, you know, thin, not thin, and so what you and I talk about all the time is being in that messy middle of not knowing and talking about, you know, starting out our conversation being real, I'm tired. Should I be saying that I'm tired and how, and again, shame comes up for me of like, oh my God, I'm talking about how tired I am. And the truth is I'm tired. I'm tired a lot. I do a lot and I'm tired a lot. And that shame says, don't tell people that I'm tired. And like the reality is I'm tired. And when you and I were talking about it, like instead of not talking about it or calling it something else, can we just normalize it? A lot of us are tired right now. <laughs> if you're out there doing things, yeah, you're going to be tired. It's like, again, that binary, like rest is not the opposite of productivity, right? right, right. It's integral to productivity. So yeah, the fact that you were tired because you just paddled or you just, it's here mm -hmm. and it's real and it's not the whole of you. And there's a lot going on in the world. And if you're not doing stuff and you're tired, that, you know, that's okay too. If, if it's bad, then reach out and get some help. But Unless it's soul, soul weary, tired. Yeah. I mean, there's, yeah, there's different, there's different kinds of tired. Yeah. 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 Anything else before we wrap this up? We don't have to well, totally end, but. I want to say thank you for having the conversation. You know, I really have a lot of respect for you and, and your podcast and what you do and what you bring and what you choose to discuss here. And so, yeah, I think it's important. I'm, I'm happy to be having this conversation and I'm happy to be having it here mm. with you. I love our conversations. <laughs> I just, I'm too. so glad that we're recording together. It's just nice. And you bring so much. I think you and I are, we're similar, but I, we're different in how we show up in the world. And I think it creates a really There's nice diversity balance. there it's as diversity. there should be. <laughs> it, is. it is. Yes. No, it I know. I, I appreciate those, the, the things that I feel like you kind of keep me on the rails is how I'll say it, <laughs> which I need. <laughs> I know we've talked about that before, but thank you. You know, thanks for, for talking about it. Thanks. And thanks for rushing around today. I know you came sliding in to record because you've had a busy day and your day is busy. And 
<laughs> you always say like, can we meet a little later? I'm like, yeah, no problem. You know, and you're running around, rushing around. So you you're so sweet. On. And I just crack up because, you know, of our origin story with the mm-hmm. being late. Because what was I today? I had asked for 335, knowing that I was going to be late. And then, of course, get here, what, at 340? <laughs> 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 oh, and, and so thank you for your graciousness. And yeah. Yeah, understanding. And yeah, and I yeah have- if I didn't slide in, I wouldn't be here. I, it's just like, this is the only way I come right now. <laughs> There's yeah. no other way. <laughs> and those things do not rub me the wrong way. You know, if you think back, like you said, to our origin story, we're like, if you're going to show up late, I don't know if I can work with you. And like, <laughs> it's totally fine. Question everything. <laughs> Could I work with her? Maybe. <laughs> I'm so I'm so glad that we weren't worked it through. I mean, we wouldn't be here right now if I hadn't said something if we hadn't worked it through. So, yeah. you know, so for well, those of you that struggle with, you know, wanting things to be predictable or you don't like when people are late or things don't turn out the way that you want, that we can work through those things. And often it is about attachment injuries or something other than what it looks like. And mm-hmm. I just feel so grateful for the relationship that we have. And if we hadn't worked through that, like we wouldn't be here today. You, the listener, would not be enjoying the conversations that Jen and I have. So that's hope that you can work through these things depending on who it is and if it's the right person and if they hear you, you know, yeah. we can. And work the flip side of that, like if you're the person that's always late or never feels like you have it together or you're always sliding in by the seat of your pants. It's like maybe it's just taking the risk and questioning the assumptions you're making about what you can and can't do, whether that's athletic or otherwise, right? Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff here. And I know for me personally, like, yeah, my life would be so much poorer without it. So Yeah. Well, you bring a lot of the fun, the lightness, the spontaneity, and I'm very good with the dependable. Let's stick on track. Let's stay on our purpose. Let's stay on topic. And I mean, I feel like your stuff looks more fun than mine does. And there's value to both of them. And it doesn't mean that this is not the only ways that we show up in the world. But for those of you, you know, if you're someone who feels like you always come sliding in and I have that when I'm not prepared, I feel like, oh, I'm supposed to be prepared. And, you know, I'm not, we all have noise around however we show up. So however you're showing up is okay. Yeah. There's many, 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 many good ways to show up. And that one perfect way is the myth. Yep. Yep. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Jen. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Hey again. I'm curious to know, how was that? Was that helpful for you to hear? Did you get some good resources? Did it feel comforting? Did it feel overwhelming? I think we need to have these hard conversations and I really struggle about how much to share. I have very, very, very strong political views and I've held back and that may change. Jen and I are very much aligned in our political feelings, our strong feelings about human rights and reproductive rights and just everything that's going on. So we may start talking about that more on the show, but my hope is that you found it helpful. If you need support, please reach out and get support. If you want to reach out to Jen, you can reach out to her at jen at heartfulnessconsulting.com. It's in the show notes. Tomorrow is the last day to sign up for the online HSP course. It will begin Monday, September 12th. That will go through October 14th. It actually may be extended because I think I'm going to Baja to paddle for two weeks in November, but we will talk about that more (laughs) as it gets closer. But the start date is September 12th. It's amazing, these courses. And if you're feeling like you don't have other people to talk to, you don't have other people who get you, this really is a great chance to, if nothing else, to learn more about the trait of being a highly sensitive person, to sit for 10 weeks in a group of other people who are wired like you. There's still diversity in how we show up as highly sensitive people, but it's a place to relax, to settle in, to learn more about the trait, to share about what's going on, and to hear other people that really get who you are and have similar experiences. And so if you listen to this and you're thinking, I don't have people to talk to, I don't have other people to connect with, this is a great way. I obviously cannot guarantee what the fit will be like in the group. I do a pre-screening, I send out a video that helps you decide if you think that you're a good fit for the group, but it really is very powerful. And we talk about perfectionism and boundaries and mindfulness and turning your perceived weaknesses into your strengths and learning how to communicate authentically. There's a lot of modeling in the group. It's a really 
nurturing, supportive environment. And many of the groups have gone on to meet after the course is over. We send out, we, it's just me. I send out weekly emails that have videos that Jen and I made on each of the topics. There sometimes are additional resources if you want to learn about them. I have prompts for each of the topics if you want to do a little bit more exploration. Everything is optional. If you don't want to watch the videos, if you want to have your monitor off, if you want to eat, if you want to get up and go to the bathroom during our online meetings, it really is about you learning to honor what you're needing and showing up in a way that works for you. We show up in the world kind of putting on our non-HSP persona. And this really is a place to just show up and be relaxed, authentic, and real. So if you're interested, tomorrow is the last day to sign up. You can go to unapologeticallysensitive.com. You can go to the HSP groups page and sign up and register. I hope you're doing well. I just hope you're managing. And if you're not managing and it's hard, I'm sorry. And that's sometimes how it is. If you're really not managing well, please reach out and get support. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Remember, sensitivity is nothing to apologize for. It's our superpower. Have a blessed day. 